hello and welcome to another fun time with How Betty Davis Saved My Life, Life Lessons from Classic Hollywood. I'm Moya. And I'm Georgia. And we cannot wait to have some fun with you. We have, um, you know, we always try to make time for our girl, our namesake of our show, Miss Betty Davis. And I thought it'd be fun for Georgia and I to react to a portion of when Betty got honored at the, um, is it the, is the Lincoln? Girl, you think I would know it's not because I'm drawing a blank. It's Kennedy Center. I keep calling it Lincoln Center. I don't know why I'm coughing and confused with the monument. I am sorry, the Kennedy. Well, it is Lincoln Center. Because, okay, so I'm looking at it on YouTube. It says Betty Davis Honorary Complete 10th Kennedy Center. So is there a Lincoln Center as well? There this, is. Okay, so this is the Kennedy Center. So I need to change that <laughs> in our description. I'll change it. But this is the 10th Kennedy Center honor. Betty Davis was amongst the honorees. I believe Sammy Davis Jr. was be, was was there. And um, oh, I think it looked like Otto Preminger, 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 however you say his name. I'm sorry, y'all. I think he was there. But anyway, it was a night of stars. And this was in 1987. So I asked Georgia, hey, you want to get in on this? She was like, absolutely. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and follow us on Facebook and all our listening platforms. Uh, 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 Spotify, iHeart, Apple, all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Appreciate all your support. So, George, are you ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right, George, like, yeah, girl, yeah, I think, pull my leg. I am all about that. So, here we are. So, starting off with Angela Lansbury, there is a complete um, presentation of this, but the Video quality is horrible. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh, shout out. You know, I got to do the shout out to, um, and I'll put a link in the description to Dia Reinhardt um, right here. This is on her channel. So go and check her channel out. Um, um, I don't know if she has the full one, but this is where we're getting this one from. All right. So let's continue. Look how nice. A Angela Lansbury all ha always had a nice shape. Good evening. When I was asked to come here tonight, I was very moved and I felt very honored. And then I thought, I'm never going to be able to get to Washington. I'm so busy sleuthing, I'll never get enough time off from work. <laughs> and then I said to myself, damn it all, I'm going to move heaven and earth to get there because Betty Davis was so important to me as a young actress. <laughs> At the age of 17, starting out in Gaslight, she was my inspiration. Her performance be sharing a dressing room with Betty Davis. But in what a dressing room it was. Okay, so I just wanted to stop right there. Georgia, this is maybe her, I know she had at least one stroke uh, right here, but I don't know if she had to have the second stroke. What do you, but she looks fantastic, don't you think? She looks pretty good, but you can tell this is like, you know, definitely um, later years and she, you know, didn't have a whole lot of time left on her horizon, but does she ever glam it up? I have to give it to her. Yeah. And you're right. You can see the effects of her stroke, but right. she is our Betty. She's just really, I love it. She gives, she goes all out. Absolutely. Okay. So let's 
Let's continue. And I, I was muted. I hope y'all heard me. But Angela Lansbury always had a beautiful figure. She did. It was a tiny, remember this, Betty? It was a tiny two bunk cabin on an old rusty. Now, let me just point this out. The reason why I knew immediately that Sammy Davis Jr. was in this group, because this is his wife, Altavis, his last wife. Um, she she's gorgeous here, almost like Diane Carroll. But um I, you see her like like in like the seventies or something. Girl, this woman had legs longer than I ten highway. Girl, gorgeous. You know, Sammy J. Davis Jr. was a little short man, but girl, he got him a statuesque glamazon. Okay, but yeah, this is Altavis Davis right here. Creaky river steamer, and four of us: Betty and I, Maggie Smith. And I'm sorry to keep interrupting. So the guy behind her behind Betty. Isn't that, that's not uh, Otto Primager. Do you know this guy? Oh, I can't say for sure. No. Oh no, that's that German actor, I think. So it, it may be in the description. I'll look at the description. I think that's that German. I can't, Kurt Jurgens. Oh, Kurt know. Jurgens, yeah. Or I Jurgens, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. On an old, rusty, creaky river steamer. And four of us, Betty and I, Maggie Smith, and Mia Farrow and the wardrobe lady were all jammed into this tiny little cabin. Two of the actresses had to lie on the bunks while one stood up against the wall and then the other was dressed by the wardrobe lady. Well, Betty at this point was lying on the bunk. I noticed out of the corner of my eye this uh, slight look of impatience and I thought, oh. Okay, so we saw Ronaldo's Maximus as Limbo used to call him and Nancy Reagan. So, you know, we forget he had a whole Hollywood career before he got into politics. So, yeah. I, I, do the presidents always attend those things? I think they do, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Oh, my goodness. You know, Ooh, she is going to, is she going to raise hell? <laughs> this is going to be death on the Nile. <laughs> Not a bit of it. Not a bit of it. Her consummate professionalism came to the fore and her wry sense of humor and she poured her patience and her indomitability and her towering talent into the role as she always has done. Betty has always said, I am a character actress. Can we ever forget the ashen face of Mrs. Skeffington? All those pathetic eyebrows in the early stages of Now Voyager. Or how many of us would be willing to shave our heads to play Queen Elizabeth? Of course, I'd be willing to cut my legs off to the knee to play opposite Errol Flynn, but that's <laughs> another story. And you can check out Mrs. Skeppington. We did that one. And I don't think we did Now Voyager yet. I no. can't remember. Okay, we so. Haven't. And we got to do Queen Elizabeth because she played her twice. But yes, please check out Mrs. Skepping, Mrs. Ske Mr. Skeppington, I'm sorry, on our um, Spotify and all our platforms. Continue, Angela. The movies that she made were so memorable, so startlingly individual, so Betty Davis. And just when we think maybe her brilliant career is, is slowing down, not a bit. She comes along with the whales of August and sets us all on our heel again. Yeah, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. In her home, Betty has a pillow. And with it, the embroidery says, old age is not for sissies. <laughs> for Betty Davis, youth Middle age, no time of life, is a place for sissies. She is an original. There has never been anyone before or since who could touch her. Hey, girl, sit in line. That's 
pants in your seat there. It's going to be a bumpy night. <laughs> In the New England of her childhood, the fortune teller told her, one day your name will be world famous. Thank you. She smiled and said, I know. <laughs> Seeing her first play, she was spellbound. Everything fell into place, she said. Georgia, have you seen that play, The Wild Duck? No. It is so good. It's by well, Ibsen, I, one of my favorite uh, writers. Um, it is so good and so tragic, it, but it's, it's fantastic. We, we should, maybe we'll, we'll do it. And I knew what I was, an actress. Not everyone agreed. Her summer stock director slapped her for using her hands too much. But she persisted and clung single-mindedly to her craft and her ambition. Now, did you see that? Um, a. a. Mill. And clung single-mindedly yeah. to her craft. I didn't know that. They her summer stock director slapped her for using her hands too much. But she Yeah. Get out of here. Learn something new every day. Yeah, he wrote Winnie the Pooh. And yeah. clung single-mindedly to her craft and her ambition. Oh, wait. You saw the um character? Yes. Not everyone agreed. Laura Hope Cruz. That's Aunt Pity Pat. From, <gasps> oh, uh, what's you know, Gone with the Wind. Her summer stock director slapped her for using her hands too much. But she persisted. Yeah, right here. Minor Watson. Yeah, uh, these people eventually went to Hollywood. Oh, I'll be. And clung single-mindedly to her craft. And her ambition. By 21, she had her first Broadway lead, a rave review from Brooks Atkinson, and then a contract from Universal Studios. When she arrived in Hollywood, she said, I was a mousy 22-year-old with knobby knees and a pelvic slouch. Hollywood was a factory town that knew what it wanted. Carbon copies. They tried to turn her into one, too. Oh, man, she's gorgeous. I, I don't know why she thought she was ugly. Glamour, glamour puss. But she fought two years for a role other actresses feared. You cared, you dirty swine. Yes. I never cared for you, not once. I was always making a fool of you. You bored me stiff. I hated you. Yes. You made me sick when I had to let you kiss me. I only did it because you begged me. You hounded <laughs> me. You drove me crazy. And after you kissed me, I always used to wipe my mouth. Wipe my mouth. As Mildred in a human bondage, she unleashed a raw power. She said, I did something no actress would think of. I dared not to be loved. Oh my gosh, I love that scene. <laughs> Despite her newly won stardom, she was bound by contract to take every role they gave her. Her fight for literate scripts was ignored. She was powerless to choose her own future. When she was now some of those I've never seen. The Golden Arrow. Yeah. I think Marked Woman, I think. But I'm going to have to go look for those other ones. Have you seen any of those? No, I'd love to see them. I know. I'm going to look for them. It's offered the role of a female lumberjack. She told Jack Warner, no more. <laughs> and walked out without pay. The first woman to challenge the system had gambled and won. John, you're out of your mind. You know, 
Well, you can't wear red to the Olympic Bowl. Can't I? I'm going to. This is 1852, Duncan. 1852. Not the dark ages. <laughs> now, Georgia, we did we did do this one. And I think I asked you when we did it. Uh, this is Jezebel. Would you have worn the red dress? To be perfectly honest, I don't think I would have had the nerve. Yeah. But I would have wanted to. Right. I think I come down on that one. Look, it depends on the dress, how the dress looks. <laughs> I wish we could see it in color. Some people try to colorize it. Girl, I don't know. I I, I think I go with your camp. I would have, I'm with you. I'd have really wanted to wear it though. Girls don't have to simp around in white just because they're not married. My father drank himself to death. My mother lives in Paris. I take a great deal of exercise. I'm accustomed to a reasonable quantity of tobacco and alcohol. I'm said to have a sense of humor. Yes, you do. Woo! I didn't think about it much. If I had, I'd have known you'd die before I did. <laughs> I couldn't have guessed you'd get heart trouble so early, so bad. Yeah, I love this movie. I'm lucky, Horace. I've always been lucky. I'll be lucky again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Where's my face? It's upstairs, in my room, in the drawer. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh. See, everybody loved this this scene. I was in it, of course. Yes, it's iconic. I love it. But girl, how she looks through him. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, this one. And you know, Tallulah Bankhead did this one first. I just can't imagine. And I, I have nothing against her, but Betty with those eyes. I think Tallulah looked at him, but Betty looked through him. And girl, I just love that and then another scene when he's upstairs trying to make it upstairs girl it's not funny georgia but girl, I'm, I'm, me and my mom looked at it and girl would be crying laughing the whole time horrible bottle. please upstairs in my room in the drawer <laughs> oh lord oh my god utter contempt i know this is this, this went to this range this sheer blood May I sometimes come here? Whenever you like. It's your home, too. There are people here who love you. They look at you and Tina, share with you peace and contentment. Of course. And just think it won't be for this time only. That is, if you will help me keep what we have. We both try hard to, to protect that little strip of territory that's ours. We can talk about your child. Our child. Thank you. And will you be happy, Charlotte? Oh, Jerry, don't let us for the moment. We have the stars. You need that one? Oh, we didn't need that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Sheer galvanic force, she yeah, will the universe the characters smoking. into being. She is an artist who never gave yes. in, then everything. As we celebrate the 10th anniversary of these Kennedy Center honors, we're proud to present three distinguished past honorees, Mr. Jimmy Stewart, 
Miss Jessica Tandy, and Mr. Hume Cronin. Okay, before we get started, so Arab, most people know Jessica Tandy from Driving Miss Daisy. She had a career, big stage actress, fantastic. Um, Hume, we all know Jimmy Stewart. Hume Cronin, we kind of learned about him from Cocoon, which we can't, we try to do, cannot find it anywhere, um, streaming or anything like that. Um, so real quick, so Georgia, should we do Driving Miss Daisy? What do you think? Because some people, that's very controversial for them. I'm okay with it, but what do you think? I'm okay with it too. Okay, well, I'm comfortable enough. Yeah. Okay, so we'll schedule that, guys. Betty Davis and I came out to Hollywood. We that was well, that was quite a while ago, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we, we had to sign seven-year contracts with options, and it was a studio that had all the options. We uh, well, if you refused to do a picture, you were suspended with the suspension time added to the seven years. Your studio also controlled the loan out cards. That, that they decided whether or not you could make a picture for another studio. The rest of it just assumed that, well, this was the way the world was, and not Betty. Not at all, Betty, Betty Davis. In the tradition of our ancestors, who were at the Boston Tea Party, <laughs> And he she wrote to Jack Warner the following letter. June 21st, 1936. Dear Mr. Warner, I know you have the right to keep me from working. A great unhappiness to me because I enjoy working, especially after my long vacation. I am so rested, it hurts. As to the loan out clause, every once in a while, a part comes along peculiarly suited to me. I want to feel at liberty to take advantage of it. You see, a change does me good, makes me do better work. I am also ambitious to be known as a great actress. And I might. Who can tell? I would be willing to take less money if in consideration you give me my rights. But if I continue to appear in more mediocre pictures, I will have no career left worth fighting for. Betty. Wow. Some months later, Mr. Warner got another letter, this time from one of his own executives. April the 12th, 1937. Dear Jack, I wish you could hear the comments of the women at the Strand about Betty Davis. You hear them say, there's a gal who doesn't need a lot of junk all over her face and who doesn't have to put on the glamour to hold us in our seats. In other words, so let's just park right there because that's why we love Betty Davis so much. And I cannot remember the first movie that I fell in love with her, but I saw literally what they just said and what she said. She was not afraid as an actress back then to not be loved. And, and, and what he said, and, and she changed the game. That's basically what Hume Cronin is reading. reading. She changed the game. She did because the consummate actress that she was, she became the part. And if it meant for her to be ugly or to be like evil or whatever, she went there and right. she totally, she became, it was amazing how chameleon she was. I mean, you saw all those different faces and all these different vignettes that they showed and how amazing she was. <laughs> yes. And, you know, she was method acting before method acting was a thing, I, I believe. I know method acting, it might have started like, I can't really remember, like either 30s or 40s. I can't really remember um, the late 40s, mid late 40s. But, you know, because she would, it, it was a scene, it might have been marked woman where she was supposed to be beat up. And they just want to wrap her head like they always did with somebody. Somebody could have gout. They want to wrap your toe and your head for whatever reason, like a mummy. She said, don't wrap my head like a mummy. If I'm been beat up, I want to look beat up. So she got the makeup people to 
you know, do a, a proper makeup job on her with black eyes and busted lips. So she wasn't playing, man. And I, that's why we love her so much. Where the average glamour girl fears to tread, Betty Davis steps in. We should let her stay that way and under no condition try to make a K Francis out of it. Now, hold on. I'll talk about Betty K. Davis is a female Cagney. <laughs> <laughs> and if we give her the right parts, we're going to have a star that will pay the interest on our bonds for years to come. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Betty Davis used to say, actresses are different from the girl next door. We are driven, obsessed, absolutely convinced of the rightness of pretending, the rightness of the character we portray. And one of our colleagues, Laurence Olivier, defined the acting this way. It is the art of persuasion. The actor persuades himself first and through himself the audience. The actor is the illuminator of the human heart. He must not be too proud to scavenge the tiniest bit of human circumstance, to observe it, to find it, to persuade himself first and through himself the audience. The actor is the illuminator of the human heart. He must this dude look bored as I don't know what. <laughs> It's probably probably was a long night because you had some other people were getting there uh, just do Sammy looking like okay when am I next? <laughs> Must not be too proud to scavenge the tiniest bit of human circumstance, to observe it, to find it, to use it. Sam Goldwyn put it in another another way. He said the most important thing in acting is honesty. And once you learn to fake that, you're in. <laughs> we all know that acting isn't steady work and anything. And actors wonder what to do about it. Well, in 1961, the following full page ad appeared in Variety. Situation wanted. Mother of three. 10, 11, and 15, divorcee, 30 years of experience as an actress in motion pictures, mobile still, <laughs> and more actionable than rumor would have it. <laughs> Wants steady employment in Hollywood, has had Broadway. References upon request. What? Signed, Betty Davis. <laughs> Survival, imagination. You better look in that camera and get your shot. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I ain't mad at you. I think this one of them Kennedy's. Uh, it's Ted Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to leave it right there. Survival, imagination, spirit, fire, and ice. These are the gifts of a great actress, the gifts of Betty Davis. The title of one of her greatest movies is taken from a poem by Walt Whitman. Now, Voyager, sail thou forth to seek and find. Betty, your life has been a brilliant voyage on stormy seas and calm. In the flickering images of film, you dared to seek and helped us to find an illumination of the human heart. Betty, God bless you. <laughs> And that is that. Georgia, what did you think? 
Oh my gosh. I thought that it was so eloquent. There were, it was so beautifully done. They captured her, the essence of not only her total portfolio of all the beautiful acting she did, but her personality and the way she fought the studio and won. And because in real life, as in her movies, she was bold and fearless. And that's why we all love her so much. Yes. Yes. And she, um, Meryl Streep, this is years ago, did something on TCM, like a voiceover talking about how Betty Davis influenced her. And she, ev any and every woman could find, she did a role for every woman. I don't care what your background is or was or whatever. You can find yourself in one of her roles. And that's why I really appreciate, appreciate her. And of course we have our other favorites, but Guys, that's why we love Betty Dick because she played she played the very rich, the very poor, the 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 smart woman, the mean woman, the good woman, and she did it so convincingly in it. And you you either love to hate her or you love to love her, and it was, you know, it, 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 depending on the role, it could be in between. And she just took you through these range of emotions, and there was there is no one like her. I don't know. I mean, maybe Streep comes close because you know she did something because she said Betty her and her and Betty had been acting since day one acting together even though they had never done a movie together but she said Betty Davis was always acting with her but I can't think of anyone off the top of my head who just I just really they make when I look at their movies I'm just oh I just really it, it touches me I don't do you have anyone else that comes close mm, I, I agree with you Meryl Streep was the only one that I could come up with that would even come close yeah yeah um I just thought about somebody else, and of course, it escaped my mind. Um, there's a few. I'm not even gonna mention them because you know, is you know, it's, it's not about that. But yeah, but yeah, Streep, I would say, and, and a few others, um, modern day actresses. But Betty is the blue, in my opinion. Betty is the blueprint to me for the modern day actress. Of yes, they have greats and they've evolved, and things have changed, and acting methods. But I, but no, it's in my opinion, I think people are whether they know it or not they are drawing from her because like like they said no one was willing to get ugly and be disliked as an actress back then and then after she did that then you saw the change um and, and like all of us were getting older um but it, like if she could stay young forever oh my gosh you know because youth is everything but but guys we just wanted to sh share that with you and react to that with you. Um, we are looking forward to do any doing some more reactions. Um, Georgia, I'm gonna give you the final word before we get on out of here. Is there anything else you want to say about that lovely um event we just saw? I thought of all the tributes that I've ever seen to Betty Davis, this was truly the finest one. Mm, really? I, I don't think I've ever seen one. I have to go look, go back and look. I, I off the top of my head, I can't recall. But I have to go back and see. And that's that's beautiful what you just said, especially because this was like towards the end of her life, you know, and and because after the Wells of August, I think that was her last movie. So um, yeah, she was kind of winding down, and you know, her health. I think she had one more stroke or something like that. She died in France and Paris, I think. She was um, that's right, in Paris, gay Paris. Well, the Summer Olympics will be looking forward to that, but I ain't got nothing to do with this. But um, guys, again, thank you so much for spending time with us. We look forward to um, being with you again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, follow us, and um, just keep supporting us. We love hanging out with you, and we do, do this for you, don't we, Georgia? We sure do. So for Betty Davis... How Betty Davis Saved My Life, Life Lessons from Classic Hollywood. I'm Moya. And I'm Georgia. And we will see you next time. Thank you, guys.